sent to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. I'll have to praise Him ever for the wondrous love He showed. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. I'm not ashamed. Sixteen in the old red black book. Getting ready to leave this world. If you're not ready, be a good place to get ready. Amen. Let's magnify the Lord just a little bit. Let Him have His way. Let Him have His way with you, and enjoy yourself. Laying up my treasures in that old
chapter 17. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you that you have come and, and, and given me uh, your time to hear uh, uh, what I feel the Lord wants me to bring tonight. And uh, Acts chapter 17, if you can stand for the reading of God's Word, please stand if you can't, we understand. While you turn it over there, I want to look at the book of Romans chapter 8. Uh, I'll, I'll leave Acts and go into St. John 14. But eight, Romans 8, 16 said, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Acts chapter 17. Now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the your Procurians and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What would this babbler say? Other some he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus of the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Arapagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we know. Uh, therefore what these things mean and for all the Athenians the strangers which were with uh, which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or hear some new thing then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said you men of Athens I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious for I passed by and beheld your devotions and I, so I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hand, neither is it worship with men's hands, and as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and bread and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto goat or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the things of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men and women everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from them, howbeit certain men clave unto him, and believed, among the which was uh, uh, Dennis the Arapagite, uh, and the woman named Damaris, and others with them. John 14, 5 and 6, and 15 and 21. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? 
Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. And tonight, as we look at this, Lucy said on that uh, comic strip, uh, how many ever watch cartoons? Mm -hmm. Yeah? How yeah. many ever watch Charlie Brown? No. Most of you probably seen Charlie Brown Christmas. Lucy said on one of those comics, uh, cartoons, that on the great cruise ship of life, some people take their deck chairs to the bow. Some people take their deck chairs to the stern. Where do you put your deck chair, Charlie Brown? Charlie replied, I can't even get my deck chair unfolded. <laughs> Fathers, we come before you this evening and we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. We love you, we praise you, we bless you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you anoint our lips, Lord, with the anointing that is needed for this day, this hour, this moment, this time. Lord, you know what you desire to accomplish tonight. Lord, we pray, Father, that you would just speak to hearts. Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost, Lord, will break up follow ground. That the seed of God may be planted and bring forth much fruit for you. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Turn around and tell your neighbor that the pastor still loves you. Tell your other neighbor the evangelist loves you. Tell somebody behind you that Jesus loves you more. Find you somebody across the room and tell them that the message tonight is. The message tonight is. It's time. It's time to unfold, to unfold your deck chair. Your deck chair. And I need me a couple of volunteers. I need a man and a woman. Am I going to point them out? I need you to get them chairs back there. Sister Marva's going to be Lucy tonight. Are you happy? Are you going to help? Well, get, uh, then you're going to be Charlie. Say, Lucy's doing out for her. Now, now, Lucy can go ahead and unfold her chair, but leave yours folded up. I'll probably have to unfold his. You back up here a little bit, Lucy. <laughs> Just have you a seat, you like. I do. As I said a moment ago, in the uh, Peanuts comic strip, Charlie Brown and Lucy were discussing theology, and Lucy said on the great cruise uh, ship of life, how many knows that we're on a, uh, a great ship in life? Yes. Amen. Yes. We're floating through time. Yes. Amen. We're going through time. And uh, many uh, uh, after the holidays are thinking about vacation time and where they're going to go and where, how they're going to get away and whatever. But uh, as she began to discuss this theology and talking with Charlie, uh, uh, that she said some people take their date chairs to the bow. If you don't know what the bow is, that's the front of the boat. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and then some people take uh, uh, their deck chairs to the stern or the back. I said, so where do you put your deck chair? And my question tonight is, where are you putting your deck chair tonight? Yeah. 
And what do you mean? It's a, a place that where that uh, uh, when you're on a cruise ship, you want to get, and not only a cruise ship, whether you're in an RV going camping or whatever, uh, you you pull these chairs out, and and it's a time for meditation and relaxation, and a time to just reflect. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Have you ever get home after a long day's work and you take uh, uh, either two minutes or maybe two hours or whatever and you take a, a seat uh, in your recliner, your couch or somewhere or another and you reflect back on your day? Mm -hmm. Amen. So that, that's where we're going with this, trying to set a scene here. And she asked Charlie where she puts her his deck chair and he replied, well, I can't even get my deck chair unfolded. And so, uh, 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 beloved, we're all passengers on this great uh, uh, cruise ship of life. We may yeah. be at the stern, and where we strain our eyes over the trackless ocean from some That's side cool. where we have already been. We may be at the bow, uh, 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 trying to peer into the empty distance cool. ahead, uh, uh, to That's looking cool. to find out, trying to discover, uh, in the hopes of knowing where we're going. Yeah. Uh, and while we do this, we are searching. We are looking for something more. Yeah. Yeah. We are looking for something or someone to answer an age-old question, yes. what is life all about? Yes. yes. That question you'll find in the bottom of Ecclesiastes and you'll find an answer in the bottom of Ecclesiastes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and the ending chapter and the ending verses uh, of Ecclesiastes. Uh, but we find what is life all about. Whether we realize it or not, we truly are looking uh, and searching for, anybody know? God. Yeah. Yeah. Because God has designed within yeah. us, Amen. and He's reserved a place within us, mm -hmm. yeah. about six inches above, below your collarbone, that nothing can satisfy it, nothing can fill it, uh, uh, nothing can uh, uh, bring you what you need. Uh, and uh, no, uh, no wonder we have done what we've done. Now, pastor's wife said I can't pick on her tonight, so I'm going to pick on pastor tonight. Amen. And every time I talk about Charlie dragging his uh, 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 unfolded deck chair, you just drag your chair across here. But pastor in his early days, amen. Now, now uh, for those that's got a problem of about uh, holding things against people, oh, mm -hmm. uh, bless you, Lord. Okay, yes, Lord. Bless you. Then, then, then you need to remember where uh, uh, what you did uh, uh, that we were all enemies of the cross yes. and what we did against Jesus Christ what well, you mean what I did yes. if we're just disobedient yes. then we've done him wrong amen amen, yes, amen. amen. Yes. if he tells you to get up and go give a hug uh, uh, to your brother or your sister yes. uh, then you better go do that yes. amen? amen it's important yes. it's just as important as anything else in life yes amen yes. but this pastor <coughs> and he's growing up in his early days and he teenage years or yeah, whatever yeah. he got messed up on some, uh, alcohol and yeah. other things yeah. uh, why did he do that because he was searching for something, uh, someone uh, uh, he, that was missing in him, uh, and he wasn't finding what he needed uh, in his life. Uh, and so he tried uh, uh, the things of this world, uh, but it did not bring the fulfillment uh, until he met a man named yes, Jesus. Amen. And after he met this yeah. man called Jesus, uh, and the Holy Ghost of God moved within that yeah. I mean, that was not made by hands. Yes, uh, then he began to find some uh, uh, satisfaction. Uh, he began to find some things uh, that began to make sense to him. Uh, he began to find peace. Uh, uh, misery began to flee. Yes. So we're searching. Every one of us. All humanity searching, searching. Amen. And if you've not found him... Let me tell you, you're in the right place at the right time, yes. my friend, and he is just waiting for you. If you just look in the right place and you'll find Jesus. Yes. Yes. But yet, like Charlie Brown, many have not opened their deck chair. Many have never fully addressed the question. 
They do not know where to place their faith. Some places their faith in pastor. Some places their faith in sister pastor. Some places their faith in the Sunday school teacher. Some places their faith in the ball coach. Some places their faith in uh, uh, their money. And some places their faith in their ability. Amen? Come on. Some place their faith in many things. We yeah. can go on with a long list tonight on yeah. what people place their faith in. Yeah. Some people place their faith in the government. Yeah. Some place their faith in the doctor. <laughs> brother Dan, uh, where'd he go? He, there he is. I appreciate you, Brother Dan. You. I'm seeing myself in you. Because I know that where I was at... Majority of people would have never left home to be in church. And I know that you're pushing just to be in the house of God. Amen. Where is he placing his faith? In Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. Amen. And you see, and I said all that to say this. Some people place their faith in doctors and medicines. Well, I'm glad I didn't place my faith in a doctor. Amen. Because it was a doctor that killed me. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah. Literally. In 2017, of February, it was a doctor over medicated me and gave me too much medicine and killed me. Like I'm glad that. Sister Marva didn't place her faith in doctors and medicine. Right. Amen. I'm glad that whenever hey. they grabbed her and rushed her out of the room, uh, uh, that she knew uh, that she needed a call on the man uh, whose hand uh, steals the water. I'm, I'm glad that she knew uh, to call on the one uh, uh, that created the heavens uh, and the earth. Amen. So be careful where you place your faith. That's right. They do not even know how to get their deck chairs open. What is life all about? I want to preach a message with the help and grace of God tonight that it's time to unfold your deck chair. Preacher, pastor has been preaching to us for several years now that we need to get off our seats and you're telling us tonight we need to unfold our chairs. <laughs> Sound like you're preaching a message of controversy and contradicting our pastor. Well, if you'll hang on here for just a little bit, I believe you'll see the connection where the pastor is talking about getting off your seat mm -hmm. and I'm talking about getting in your chair. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. You see, sometimes we got to lose to win. You ever heard that statement? Yeah. Amen? Down to get up. Amen? Sometimes you've got to get down to get back up. Right. To get higher than ever before. Yes. Yes. Paul addressed these circumstances into Athens to uh, Africus uh, uh, in the year about 50 AD. And this great city of Athens was overflowing with people who were, and I quote, very religious. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are living in a world today that's very religious. They were discussing yeah. philosophies and studying uh, religions from all points uh, 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 of the, the unknown world. And they're still doing it today. Yes. Yes. See, where will you go in the morning to get your coffee? McDonald's? Brothers. Brothers? Brothers. Dairy, Queen. Uh, Dairy Queen. And you'll walk in there and there'll be several in there uh, discussing religion, won't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll do it at Taco Bell. Everything They'll do it at McDonald's. And they'll see Pastor walk in and they'll want to start an argument with him. Uh, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. now, now, am I right on this? Right. Okay. Yeah, well, I know I've been there and it's done, been done that to me too. Mm -hmm. Many times. Yeah. But you see, uh, people are still doing the same thing that they was doing in Paul's day yeah. uh, in, in the city of Athens. Uh, why? Because they are religious. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you something. Religion is not worth a dime. That's right. right. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and just cut it on down. I wouldn't give you a penny for religion. Right. No. Religion will send more people to a devil's hell. And notice I said devil's hell. Yes. Yeah. 
Amen? Because it wasn't designed for humanity. It wasn't designed for you. It wasn't designed for me. Well, preacher, what about those that ain't saved? It wasn't designed for them. They're not saved by their choice. And if they don't get saved, then they'll end up in hell. Amen? Yes. But hell was designed for Satan. Right. Yes. And because it was designed for him and him only, and because of the spirit of rebellion and stubbornness in the land, uh, hell is enlarging yes. day. Yes. Amen. Amen? Yes. If hell was designed... Oh, I didn't know I was going this route. If hell was designed for uh, 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 human beings, then it would have been made in the beginning big enough to contain uh, those that would be going to hell. Amen? But because of people's uh, 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 disobedience and will not adhere to the word of God, hell has to enlarge itself beyond measure. Amen. They were discussing the philosophies of the world of that day, and they're still doing it today. Yes, in the city of Athens, there was even a temple was uh, built, and it was dedicated to the unknown God. Uh -huh. They were searching, but it seems never committed. Uh, and as it's dragging their unopened deck chair from one place to another, they were unsettled. They were searching. And couldn't find our place. I want to tell you. Those of you that are regulars here at the Lighthouse of Praise. You should already know your place here in the sanctuary. Yeah. And worship the Lord your God. Yeah. Amen. And let me take a step further. Your place is not to sit on your seat. Right. It would do good the pastor just unbolt all these seats. And have a good bonfire. <laughs> Amen. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Don't give him no ideals. I'm going to give him all the ideals I can. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Yes. It takes you and I working together as a team. Yes. Teamwork. Yes. Worshiping together as a team. Yes. Working together. Why? Edifying the body of Christ. Yes. Building up the body of Christ. Yes. Loving one yes. another yes. as Christ loves you. <laughs> as a Christ loves me. Amen. Helping one another. Yes. But we find that uh, 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 Paul, he's uh, moved by what he saw in this great city of Athens. He was stirred up. He was troubled. Uh, he was moved by the heaviness and the emptiness that it brought these people in spite of all their attempts to be religious. They were so starved people dragging their unopened deck chairs behind them. Yeah. You see, he's going to get tired here if he ain't already. See, she's sitting down resting. He's having a, he dragging around trying to find a spot. Amen. There's so many people that are running from one church to another yeah. trying to find a spot. Come on. There's so oh, many people that are running through a life and trying to find their place in society. Yeah. Let me tell you where your place is. Your place is to worship the Lord your God yes. in spirit and in truth yes. and to win the loss to Jesus. Amen. You cannot be the salt of the earth. You cannot be the city set on a hill if you're dragging your deck chair. Right, right. You can't be what you need to be and be all that you can be. You see, I believe of the military of the United States of America have gotten this from God. Be all you can be. Because the Lord our God wants us to give it yes. our best and our all. Amen? Yes. Yes. Well, God opened the door for Paul and Paul responded. The Apostle Paul walked through that door opened by God and shared the good news of Christ Jesus with the people of Athens. What have you shared today? Amen? That's right. What have you shared today? That's right. Think about it. What will you share tomorrow? Beloved, our society is not much different than that in Athens. Recent research indicates that our North American culture today compares more closely with that of Paul's time than at any other time in history. Think about that. 
Paul's timeless message speaks to us in America as well. The Apostle Paul opens his message with these words of Acts 17, 22 and 23 when he uh, when said then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious for I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Yes. Him declare I unto you. Yes. I know tonight I'm using a lot of scripture I normally don't do, but tonight this is an, a different, unusual message. The Apostle Paul was saying, to Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. Yeah. For as I went through your city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim unto you. Yeah. Yeah. You see, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, you're going to worship something right. or someone. <coughs> Amen? Yeah. You will. And we got, oh, it would surprise you to know the statistics of how many people that names the name of Christ that are worshiping and not even knowing what they're really worshiping. That's true. Right. Amen? That's true. Not knowing who they're worshiping. Uh -huh. Because they're just following along what Sister Sandy's doing. Yeah. I wish they were. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Am I picking on you yet? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to mention you, was I? I wish that people would find somebody that's got a hold of God, yeah. been with God, yeah. and still got a hold of God, yeah. and still know Him yeah. as He really is, yeah. uh, yeah. and try to go after God like they are. Yeah. I believe the Apostle Paul stated it like this. Follow me even as I follow Christ. Yes. Amen. And when you stop, when, when that one that's in your crosshairs that you're watching stops following Christ, yeah. mm -hmm. then you just go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Yeah. Not to ground bell telephone. Yeah. Well, that's obsolete, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go. Not to Verizon. That's right. Amen? That's right. Uh, 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 not to, uh, what, what, what's them others? AT&T. AT AT well, well, instead of getting on the gossip box, go to the Lord God Jehovah and say, Hey Lord, yeah. uh, they have, uh, uh, I don't know if they know what they've done or doing, uh, but let me say, Lord, uh, uh, just uh, speak with them uh, and draw them back uh, to where they belong. Yes. Bless us. Amen? Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes, sir. You see me doing something that's wrong, and you know it's definitely not, not what, not hearsay. Come on. Not hearsay. No. Not man's law, no. but according to the word of God. Yes, brother. Amen. Yes. You see, now, now, now these. I'm going to say this, brother Junior. These Ath uh, Athenians, they had this altar to the unknown God, like a lot of people will pray at night when they go to bed. Mm -hmm. They don't pray all day long, and then they go to bed and they say, "Lord, if I've committed any sin, forgive me." Yes. Oh, I'm going to get stoned right here. You're going to have to grow up so I can hide behind you. <laughs> I want to tell you something. If I commit a sin, I'm going to know it before the day yeah. is in. Amen. Why? Because the Holy Ghost Spirit of God dwells within me. And He is faithful and just to let me know that. Amen? Well, He don't let me know. Well, you're not listening. Amen? 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 You're not listening. Now, you can get mad at me if you want to, but I don't have to go to bed every night and say, Lord, forgive me if I've done something. I want to tell you, if I've done something, I'll know it. Yes. Because He will show it. Because yes. He's faithful. Yes. He loves me enough to rebuke me in my error. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. Jesus. Well, He don't mean. Well, then, oh. Bless Him, Lord. 
You know what the Bible says that he chastens? Those he loves. That's right. If you're not being chastened, then the Bible calls you something else. Mm -hmm. Amen? But the Apostle Paul started where the people were in their spiritual journey. He used Greek poetry and idols as a point of contact with them. Although the people of Athens were constantly seeking after new ideals and new truth, it was very shallow and superficial, often with no real fixed beliefs. The Athenians were not sure they had all the possibilities covered, so they set up this altar of worship to the unknown God just in case they missed one, even though they did not understand. They tried to cover the the basis. We got people that went to church today trying to cover the basis. So they made $200 and they put $20 in the plate and, and they said oh, oh well, wait a minute let me just make sure and they put another $5 bill. Well that's good that you uh, done it but you're doing it for the wrong reason. Right. Uh -huh. Your tithing and your offering is a part of your worship. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, never, oh, Brother Bobby Floyd can't come out in me here. Never say, I'm taking the offering, receive the offering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Pastor Bobby will say, If I've got to take the offering, I have strong armed you and took it against force. Yeah. But if I receive it, you gave it willingly. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen? That's right. And so, worship. And those of you that are oh, here, he is our money again. Well, but you ain't got a problem going down to the uh, 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 mm, to the theater to listen to some country group or rock and roll by band or, or whatever, and and shell out a uh, uh, fifty bucks for a ticket. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. And even though you let your light bill go, that was uh, 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 you needed that fifty dollars to pay. Come on, Amen. Yes. Oh, but, but you don't understand. This is a once in a lifetime to hear them. You don't understand. Uh, you miss a once in a lifetime <laughs> blessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why am I getting on this, Lord? I don't know. But we see that they tried to cover. And we got people who try to cover. We got people that they will walk by uh, Brother Brian, <clears throat> but they'll say, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover my bases, and I'm gonna buy the Pastor Junior some lunch." <laughs> Amen. Did not Jesus Himself say, "As you've done it to the least of these"? You've done it even unto me. Amen. Why do we single out those that are uh, 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 elevated in our natural and we'll single them out and we'll uh, uh, rush to them and to their aid and, and we'll want to do for them but uh, that, that, that people don't say much about or talk about. Amen? Come on. How do you know all this? I'm the little guy. I'm the brother Brian tonight. Amen? I've rubbed shoulders with some of the biggest names in America. But nobody knowed this little country Tennessee boy. Amen? But I know Jesus just as much as any of these others. Amen? Uh, who wrote? No, I ain't going to name names there. I'm not as dumb as I look. Bless him, Lord. But we find that there's a story about an army sergeant who was caught near a beach by a German artillery and managed to protect himself by moving to the water's edge. While improving his position with a trench shovel, he came upon an ornate crucifix, the kind that prosperous Italians often hung on their bedroom walls. Two hours later, in the midst of still another German artillery barrage, a United States chaplain rode into the water beside him. A moment later, a German 88 shell landed just 10 yards up the beach. The master sergeant held up the muddy crucifix as he'd been clutching for dear life, and in discovering it, he turned to the startled captain and said, My God, sir, I'm glad to see you. How do you make this thing work? The problem is, 
with a superficial religion, one that has no commitment, is that you will never know how to make it work. This is very evident in our culture today, as it was in Paul's day. People would rather not consider where they actually stand before God. Maybe you're also like that. You may have never really committed your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You may have allowed Him to be your Savior, but have not allowed Him to be your Lord. Amen. That's worth repeating, I believe. Yeah. Yes. You may have allowed Him to be Savior, but you've not allowed Him to be Lord. Right. Maybe you're like this. But if you are, if your faith is superficial, it probably will not deeply affect how you live. That's why you so easily will slip out words when things don't go your way. Yeah. True. Yeah. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. That's why it's so easy to fly off the handle. That's why it's so easy to take that, slip it in your pocket when nobody's looking. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen? Amen? That's why it's so easy as the preacher that was on his way to church and he was speeding and uh, uh, the policeman pulled him over and he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. And while he, the policeman was getting out, he uh, hooked that seatbelt up and he said, uh, Sir, I'm glad to see that you're wearing your seatbelt. The preacher said, Yes, always, always, officer, always. He said, Yeah, I, I, I'm just wondering if you run it through your belt first. Uh -huh. That's why it's so easy to tell. And there ain't no such thing as white lies. No. Little lies. Amen. Amen. No. Lies a lie. Amen. Amen. You know, because when you're not fully committed to the Lord your God and you're not allowing Him to be Lord, you're easy to be tempted and drawn away yeah. by these things. Yeah. And so it's a difficult thing to look into the mirror of our soul and to see where we really stand in our relationship with God. Some hold back from total commitment to Jesus and in a way they're looking for a loophole to make them acceptable before God. W.C. Fields was sitting in bed one morning with a drink in one hand and a Bible in the other. His friend Douglas Firebank stopped by to see him. He said, Bill, I didn't know you were a religious man. And uh, W.C. replied, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just looking for a loophole. People whose religion is shallow often think that they will get by by finding uh, some loophole. Yeah. There is no loopholes in the Word of God. That's why He told you and I to let our conversations be yay, yay, and nay, nay. Amen? That's why He tells us. Amen? Uh, we're not to uh, put them uh, adjectives in, in our sentences uh, to try to dress up the conversations. Amen? Ooh, I'm doing better preaching than you are amen. Bless Him, Lord. In the spirit, the spirit that God placed in all human beings is crying out for a relationship with the Creator. Yet our flesh is in battle with our spirit, and if our commitment is superficial, we will far too often give in to our flesh. If we fall short, we will yield to the flesh. We do not know how many of the people in Athens were serious in their search for the truth that day. Uh, but now we, uh, when we yield to the truth in Christ Jesus, we have become a new creation. Amen, brother. We are transformed by the yeah. truth and Amen. live in it. Amen. Jesus shared this glorious promise uh, when he said that you will know the truth and the truth will what? Make you free. The truth will make you free. In yeah. John 8 and 32, Paul stood before the people of Athens proclaimed, uh, you're very religious. Uh, uh, my friend, when he stood there in verse 22 uh, of the chapter of 17 of Acts, uh, uh, there they on the top of Mars Hill. They were religious. They were religiously discussing various religions. Uh, yet it did not move them to uh, move them to faith. It was superficial. Uh, it was a religion, a faith that did not answer the question uh, of what life is all about. Uh, it did not lead to a relationship with the Creator. Uh, it did not lead to eternal life. Uh, they were just moving yes, their deck chair uh, from one end yes. of the ship uh, uh, to the other. Yes. It was much like rearranging the deck chair on the Titanic. 
as the ship begins to slide into the deep. So Paul shared the truth of this God that was unknown to them. If he's unknown to you tonight, if you'll just hang on, I want to get you in a place that you'll know him before this night is through. Yes. The God who made this world and everything yes. in it, he is, is he unknown to you? He is Lord God Jehovah. He is yes. the great I am. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Sabaoth. He is Jehovah Sintanu. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord my God. And he's the Lord God of Elijah. The Lord God of Elisha. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord God of Jesus. And he's the Lord God of Donnie Lawson. And I hope you can declare that he's your Lord God tonight. Somebody give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Acts 17, 24, and 25. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with the hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. In other words, God does not live in shrines. Right. Oh. Made by human hands. Right, brother. Nor is he served by human hands. Bless you, Jesus. As though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath of all things. Bless you. My friend, he desires our praise. Amen. He inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. True, honest, pure praise. Amen. You do not, you've got contaminated praise if you're sitting in this house and you've got ill feelings towards somebody else. Amen, brother. Whether they're here or not. You're right. That's contaminated praise, and your praise did not do any good. That's right. And if I should ask for prayer, don't bother laying hands on me with contamination in you. That's right. Amen? That's right. Do you get off of ugly and mean? I told you I love you enough to tell you the truth. Yes. yes. Amen? Yes, Lord. How can you say you love God if you love not the brother whom you have seen? That's right. Bless you, Lord. Amen? Bless you, Lord. Amen? And we've got so many. Yeah, I've watched church after church after church. I've seen so many that they have contaminated praise. Bless you, Lord. I've seen singers get on the stage and they would storm off the stage stomping and spewing and blowing because of the spirit of doing. Yes. Jealous. Yes. They sung my song. Yes. Well, if it was your song, it didn't need to be sung in church anyway. That's right. Now, if it was inspired by the Holy Ghost yes. and somebody pinned it down, it don't matter whose lips it comes out of. Yes. If it's being given as praise yes. and glory to the Lord our God. Yes. There ain't no telling how many hundreds of times this pastor has read and preached from Acts chapter 17. Yep. But it's not his message. Right. It's not my message. Right. It's not his word and it's not my word. It's the words of the living God that yes. first came through the mouth of the Apostle Paul and as he pinned it down, as Dr. Luke began to pin down the words of the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. We cannot appease God with our own works of righteousness. Beloved, we are all have fell short of the glory of God, yet God came down and was made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And God placed His Spirit within us by which we receive God's transmission to us. He has placed within us the capacity to respond to Him. The Scriptures are clear. The Spirit witnesses with our spirit. Yes. yes. I read you in the beginning of Romans 8 and 16, the Spirit itself bear witness. Amen. Yet to the majority of the Athenians, this was the height of folly. Bless in fact, God. Dr. Luke goes on to state that when they, the Athenians, heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. Uh -huh. yes. You'll find that in Acts 17 to 32. Yes. Some of these I'm just paraphrasing, trying to break it down to a little a, a greater understanding. 
Somebody says, I wish you would preach from another translation than the King James Version where that uh, we can understand it better. Uh, uh, well, you've got these other translations. Why aren't you living any better? Uh -huh. Amen? Uh -huh. I didn't know what was going there. So how do people feel about the resurrection today? If you look at the statistics and you look at uh, uh, just in the Pentecostal realm itself, it will surprise you how many people really don't even believe there's a resurrection. True, brother. Amen. Amen? Amen. They think we're going to live a, just a good jolly life here. God's going to bless our bank accounts, put food in our tables, give us a nice home with a good heat and air. And uh, got a good ride that we can ride down to the restaurant, socialize with our friends, uh, and everything just be hunky dory. And when life's over with, well, that'd be it. But there's more to it than that. There's an eternity. Yes. Resurrection. Yes. For many, it's the same thing. They walk away. Resurrection. Some don't believe that none can be raised from the dead. That is just a fairy tale. Yet, beloved, we're told that over 500 people in the day of Jesus were eyewitness of the resurrection of Jesus. Uh -huh. Yet so many allow their eyes to be blinded with the truth. God's doing everything He can to redeem His creation. God's deepest desire is to connect with His creation. Bless him, Lord. You brought this out somewhere along the lines Wednesday night. Sadly, most people's problem is not discovering God. It is decided if they even want to discover Him. God. If they ever want to know Him. God. They are not willing to even open their deck chair. Oh, I've said it many, many times that most people need to tear out uh, number six of the red back hymn. Yeah. They'll get up and they'll sing with every fiber or ounce of their strength within them. I want to know more about my Lord. Yes, Lord. And they're the first ones that uh, are uh, trying to shut the preacher down where they can run out uh, and get down to Ruby Tuesday so they can get uh, a good seat. Amen. Preach it. Yes, Lord. And the ones that look at their watch because a, a, a cracker barrel is going to get too crowded before they get there. Amen. Now, well, the Apostle Paul had a, I might as well go ahead. I don't wait it out knee deep in this. I might as well go ahead. The Apostle Paul, he put it like this. He said their God was their belly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I aggravate Sister Daisy a whole lot about chicken and dumplings. One of these days, I, I, I'm going to, I, I, most likely, I, I, I figured she'd uh, make a pot of chicken and dumplings when she heard I was coming and say, I've got them ready for you. <laughs> well, if she does, we'll just go downstairs and break out the bowls and, 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 and just shower them until uh, they're all gone. Yeah, Amen? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Well, well, were you expecting her to make you some chicken and dumplings? Well, yeah. I wouldn't mention it if I didn't. <laughs> But I do the same thing in the spirit realm. Yes. When I come to church, as the old song we sing, I, I come here expecting God to move. Yeah. I'm a poor God going to move. I'm going to have to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes. Yes. i got to get my deck chair unfolded if I'm going to get God to move. Oh, but people... Uh, they don't want to know it. They're not uh, really to open up their deck chair. I'm convinced that the bulk of humanity is listening to their flesh, just doing their own thing, unconcerned about eternity, yet be assured that God would be found by those who sincerely seek Him. Jesus died for all and is available to all who search with all their heart for God so loved the world uh, that He gave His only begotten Son. Christianity is extremely inclusive. Jesus loves everyone and died for the sins of the world. Let me say that again. Jesus loves everyone. I love yeah. everyone. Yeah. Jesus yeah. don't love your sin. He don't love your wicked yeah. ways. He don't love your evil doings. No. But He loves your simple, wretched soul. Yeah. And He died that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my friend, the only thing that's exclusive about Christianity 
is that God the Father provided a single Savior and He did not hide this truth from His creation. His name is Jesus. Yes. If you seek Him, you will find. If you ask, it will be given unto you. Yes, if you not, the door will be open unto you. Notice there was some actions to receive it. Hear me. Notice there's some action to receive it. If you seek, come on, Lucy, go seek it. If you seek, you're going to find. Yes. If you ask, Lucy, ask. You see, she had to get up. She had to move around. She had to put forth effort. Yes. She had to seek. Yes. She wasn't seek finding, so she began to ask. That's right. Amen. 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 This is a lame excuse and a crutch when people go, well, God knows my thoughts anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, He knows your thoughts, but He wants you to get off of your backside and yes. get up yes. and do something yourself yes. about your waiting on you to move. That's right. If you knock, come on Lucy. You got to knock. 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 You ain't knocking. You know what? You know how to get somebody up at one o'clock in the morning? On their door. You ain't going to get them up by doing it like Lucy was back there. Right. You're not going to get nobody up. <laughs> now you leave Pastor alone. <laughs> Somebody is sound asleep. Oh. You want to get them up. Whether there was an emergency, you was broke down, you needed something, or whatever yeah. the case may be. You're going to do this right here yes. on their door. Amen. And it's time for the yes. children of God to begin to knock at heaven's door. Hallelujah. As Smith Wigglesworth said, it's just good time for us to quit patty caking around. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's time for us to quit being a, 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 a laid back uh, and modest Christians yeah. and get radical for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Shout a little bit. Christ Jesus is within you, and He can be found by those who seek Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yet many, directly or indirectly, I told God that they do not want or need Him. Well, how do they do that? You don't have to say nothing. Your body language tells a whole lot. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Now, if I'm sitting back there and Pastor's up here, he's just pouring his heart out. He just barely catch his breath, and he's just sweating away, and he just uh, uh, on and on and on. And I'm back there, and I got one foot throw back. I guess. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> uh -huh. I don't have to tell him I'm bored. <laughs> I don't have to speak a word. He'll look back there and say, well, Brother Donnie ain't liking what I'm preaching. He's tired of it. He's ready to go home. He's wanting to go over here to Gondola's and get something to eat. That's all that boy thinks about is eating. <laughs> but he don't know that I'm trying to get him prepared for the yes. marriage supper of the Lamb where yes. he eat the best meal of his life. Amen. 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 Body language tells a lot. Right. You don't have to say, God, I don't want you. Your actions tells that God that you don't want right. him. Amen. 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 When you don't talk to him and you don't uh, uh, study after him and learn after him tells that you don't want him. Right. Oh, bless. 
And you know how much you hurt him when you do that? But when they stand before God, He's going to honor their decision. He'll honor your decision. There's nothing unfair about that. The Lord gives us choice. He said to Joshua to choose who we're going to serve. I love it when you stand before God, this subject will not be about the people who have never heard. Amen. It won't be about the people who never sought after Him. It will be about you. Amen. Everybody take the finger and turn it around. That's right. Say me. me. When you stand before God, yes. it's going to be about me. Me. Amen. me. Yes. When I stand before God, it's going to be about Donnie Lawson. That's right. yes. When you stand before God, it's going to be about Pastor Junior Pena. Yes. And when you stand before God, it's going to be about you, nobody else. Yes. Amen? Yes. What did you do with what was given to you? That's right. Amen. What have you done with it? Well, we see what she's doing. She's sitting back and she's utilizing this chair. Amen. We see what he's doing. He's having to hold it up. He can't make a decision. The Bible says an unstable man, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He don't know whether he wants on the left side or the right side. He don't know whether he wants in the front or the back. What did you do with what was given to you? The scripture is clear. To believe is life, while to deny the truth brings death. God is fair. Yes. The question is often asked, how could Jesus be the only way to God? We as American value broad-mindedness. We live in a culture of tolerance, and we tend to think that we should never be uh, confrontational toward those who sincerely believe differently. Beloved, the issue is truth. Truth, not sincerity. Truth operates independent of feelings and desires. The way to God is not a matter of opinion, but a matter of fact that the only way is through Jesus who died for our sin. Yes. He was raised from the dead and hunger saw the risen Lord. It's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of truth. Now, some would say that that's narrow, but beloved, truth by definition is narrow. Jesus did not just claim to know the way to God. He said, I am the way. Yes. Yeah, I I am the truth. I am the life. No one can go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. I'm convinced that Jesus said that out of great compromise for humanity, for all mankind. I believe His heart hemorrhaged for humanity. Oh, my friend, beloved, there we've got so many distractions in our life. We have so many roles to play, so many tasks to complete. We have so many balls in the air. Oh, that seems to be a little uh, 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 so little time uh, in our day uh, and each item each relationship seems so important uh, and maybe they are mm -hmm. My Lord, yet far too often we set aside the ball yep. that is labeled our time with Jesus with the one we call Lord yeah. Yeah. our flesh finds that it is the easiest ball to drop we eliminate church from the first thing. That's the first thing that goes. Yep. We get busy. We get a good job. We got family coming over. What are we going to do? We go on to just eliminate church. Amen? Amen. We're going to eliminate God. Our flesh finds the easiest ball to drop. Yet it's that time of quietness, that time of stillness with our Lord that strengthens us, enriches us, transforms us. Oh, beloved, we cannot and we must not yield to the flesh. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. Oh, yes. As you stand in the night, beloved, do not have a superficial faith. Open your deck chair and rest and allow time to be in the presence of an almighty God. Uh, and when you do, uh, all of your tasks, all of your relationships will be seen in a new glorious light. For you will see them through the eyes of Jesus Christ, your Savior and your Lord. Uh, you will have no problem uh, when you come into the house of God uh, uh, shouting out amen. Uh, you will have no problem of uh, raising your hand. Uh, you will have no problem uh, of dancing in the Spirit. Uh, you will have no 
problem of being obedient to the voice of God. You'll be desiring, willing. You'll come through with a prayer on your lips saying, God, what can I contribute to this worship service tonight? Blessed Jesus, have your way. That's when you get in the place of Jesus Christ. And rest in Him. You will never have true rest until you get fully committed to Jesus. When you get your deck chair unfolded, when you get your deck chair unfolded, I said, when you get your deck chair unfolded, you'll be the unstoppable Christian that the Apostle Paul preaches about. You'll be like the Apostle Peter that even the shadow began to hit the sick. And they were healed. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. God will use you mightily. But until you get your deck chair unfolded, you cannot be a vessel that God can use. I don't mean to be mean. I don't mean to be ugly. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. If you've not got the point tonight, until you find true rest in Christ. True rest in Christ is not just being born again. But true, true rest in Christ is completely surrendering all to Him. Completely giving to Him. That everything in your life is about Jesus Christ. Amen. You're fanatical. Well, I might be fanatical, but I'm fanatical for the right thing. Amen? I'd rather be fanatical for Jesus than to be all that for the devil. I'd rather be fanatical for Jesus, not known by nobody, than all the prominent men and women of the world. My name becomes a household too. It don't matter how little my bank account is as long as I found that rest in Jesus Christ. Because there's no bank account big enough to replace what Jesus can do for me as you stand tonight. You need to pray. Preacher, my deck chair's been I've been dragging around long enough. We could have preached that message a different way, but I felt I needed to get some attention. Get somebody's attention. We could have preached that message of learning to enter into the rest of God. For me to enter into the rest of God, don't mean we come in and sit on a pew. For me to enter the rest of God means that I come in, fired up, ready to go up, and to send my worshiper. Amen? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not ashamed to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. I'll have to praise Him ever for the wondrous love He showed. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His love.